Welcome to Spiritual Transformation, the podcast where I interview the spiritually gifted and the spiritually transformed. I'm your host, Mary Beth, and I'm so excited to introduce you to today's guest, Andrea Ramirez. Andrea, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and read our audience your bio. I've been following you for at least a couple years, I think. And yeah, for a while, yes. I've hired you. I think you're fabulous and I want to share you with the world. So, but I, but since they don't know who you are, I'm going to go ahead and read your short bio. Okay. Andrea Ramirez is the founder of Fortuna Living and proud co-founder of MagicalAudios.com. She's a hypnotherapist, channeler, spiritual consultant, and counselor, and she brings spirituality, business, and entrepreneurship together. She gives practical, down-to-earth spirituality. That's her goal for greater focus, flow, confidence, mindset, and self-care. Well-being is her highest value, and so she shares her knowledge with the main focus on all-around well-being from spirit. Spirit is our essence. It's who we really are, the source of peace and wisdom. Bringing a spiritual practice into being and applying it to our highest good is her purpose, to share knowledge and experience with the world in hopes to facilitate the healing and well-being of ourselves through different techniques such as hypnotherapy, channeling, tarot or tarot, however you want to pronounce it, for, for personal evolution, Reiki and guided meditation. So do you say tarot or tarot? I've heard both ways. I say tarot. Tarot. Okay. Because, yeah. That was well, my, my first. Yeah. And also my main, my, my, uh, my mother language is Spanish. So it says tarot. So I say tarot. <laughs> Are you living in Portugal right now? Yeah, right now I'm based in Portugal. I'm traveling. I'm always between Portugal and Barcelona and Spain. Okay, that is so awesome. Well, um, I guess, you know, first, I know a little bit about your background, but I would love for you to share some of your background. Like, like who was Andrea as a child and how did you get here? How did you become a spiritual entrepreneur? How did this all start? <laughs> Well, long story short, <laughs> when, I was, when I was a child, I always had uh, what you could call metaphysical experiences. And growing up, I thought they were normal until told otherwise. And mostly it was from my family that they were saying, oh, this is not normal. What you're experiencing is not right. My grandmother was Catholic, so she was very squared in this sense. Mm -hmm. And although all the women in the family had certain gifts so for example my mom can look through a glass of water what's happening in anywhere in the world so she can have non-local vision my wow. grandmother would have an immense gift of manifesting stuff when I needed something I would go to her and ask her to please manifest it for me and my aunt she would have a premonitory dream she would dream everything that was going to happen and so I'm kind of a mix of everything. And I grew up like that. And I had very, very intense experiences. And um, so that was in one hand. And that was very much um, the way I grew up. And I understood myself to be how I understood reality and how I understood myself. Because also I grew up in a family where I had a bully at home and I was bullied at school. So this spiritual part became kind of the backbone of my personality, what gave me the strength, what gave me the, the understanding of who I really am and that whatever is that you are told you are is not true. You only, only you know who you are, your true self. And I started to cultivate it. And this is why self-care became my highest value and my top priority. Because also through self-care, we discover how to heal and what needs healing in our lives and what needs uh, more beauty in our lives. And so basically, that, that, that is the journey for me until, until now. Obviously, the more you heal, the more um, vibration, vibrationally equal opportunities, people and circumstances you bring to your life. So I always say things can only get better if you really work on yourself. Absolutely, I love that. And yeah, I think that bullying absolutely is one of those things that if we experience it as a child and we work through it, it actually could be one of the 
ironically, one of the best things that ever happens to you because it really teaches you to go inward and heal those emotional wounds. My dog is choking yeah. in the background. <laughs> Of course, we don't edit on this show. We don't mess around with editing. We we just keep all the bloopers in. It's it's more fun. It's more fun that way, I think. So um, I would like to know a little bit. The title of this episode is Awaken Your Spiritual Gifts. Are there any suggestions like practical? Like I know you you love to help people, you know, combine spiritual world with the practical world. How do we apply it? What would be some suggestions on how we could awaken our own spiritual gifts? And do you think everybody has them? We all have it. We're all spirit. We're just in this human form. We're in this vehicle for now, you know? And so we have an absolute 100% total capacity to bring those spiritual gifts that we are, what we are, what we truly are into this reality. And one thing that actually helps a lot with bringing spirituality alive into life is humor and yeah. and also playing so for example um when we talk about spirituality one of the main things is intuition intuition is 50 percent what you know consciously and another 50 percent that it's like a puzzle of many things that have happened that you have picked up subconsciously but it's also a lot of information that gets channeled through intuition so one game that is actually really fun it's to think of one thing that you would like to come across during your day for example tomorrow I would like to find a penny when I'm walking on the street a penny is going to show up in my path and so you put that intention out there and it's like a game, like a treasure mm-hmm. hunt. So you go about your day, you're always looking around a little bit, like like a game. Okay, when are you going to show me this penny? And the penny will show up. And sometimes not one, but three. Or it will keep on going several days and the penny will keep on showing up. So, uh, or, or almost in an intuitive way, instead of taking the same street when you go back home, you take a different street and suddenly the penny is there. So mm. that's one of the of the things. It's like little exercises that seem very silly and that are also known to help with creating new neuropaths in your brain. And but that are also very spiritual. They're deeply spiritual because we're connecting with this greater intelligence that creates everything. We're connecting with this greater intelligence that will give us the vision to find what we're looking for, you know, that we yeah. know is there. So you just reminded me of a story, um, a manifestation game that I was playing with my son, even uh, the game was we were we needed to pick a couple things or one thing to manifest the following the following three days. And, you know, you focus and you you really set that intention, which is important. But something that we got to do is remember to look for it, because thank goodness my son did, because I would have I would have completely missed it because I wasn't focused on looking for the signs that I asked for from the universe. And what, what one of them was a drum. And I literally was at this restaurant. Uh, it was a Japanese restaurant and apparently it was somebody's birthday. And the way they celebrated was boom, boom, boom. They come w- okay. walking by me with a drum. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I didn't even make the connection. And I was like, yeah, I didn't see um, any of my manifestations. And my son was like, um, mom, there's a drum right over there. Like they're, they're literally drumming. And that was what you asked to see. And, I, you know, cause that's a pretty tough one. Like you can pick stuff like that. The other one was a rubber duck. And then I, I, I the, the next time I did it, I saw these rubber ducks like everywhere. They were actually having a festival downtown that included rubber ducks in Cincinnati. They do this year. I didn't know about it. I didn't know about it until I saw it, but I was like, I think that's my sign, but it's fun. Like you said, it's fun. Yes. It's a game. We have to, we have to use that playful part of ourselves in order to bring that magic because it really is like magic. You know, Mm -hmm. we have been put in this box in society that things are supposed to be linear. Everything has to be very squared and in one way and whatever is in the magic book, whatever the magic book says, that's the truth and the only truth. And guess what? That book is 
poorly translated. The, the way we have our interpreting that is very, very poor. So yeah, in that way, we have to take our own spirituality as our personal responsibility in the same way that you take care of your eye health, of your um, ears health, that you can hear properly, that you can see properly. We should take care of our own spiritual health to be able to feel properly, to understand properly our nature and the power there is above all of this that we see. This is like a stage in a theater. Mm -hmm. Spirituality is everything that is happening behind the stage. Is the actors preparing? Is is all the the dressing rooms? It's all the you know the little um, decorations the band that's preparing, that's the universe, that is spirituality, and that's how you create your reality. If you connect to that, then the theater play is going to synchronize to that vibrational reality that you're bringing in. So when we see violence in the world, the first thing we have to ask ourselves, in which way am I exercising violence to myself? Mm. What is my inner talk? Am I, am I really taking care of myself? Am I being... Uh, gentle with my words to myself or I'm, am I self-deprecating all the time or saying oh when I drop something oh you're so dumb that's being violent to, it, to yourself and if you don't know how to create peace within you how could you expect to see peace in the world so it's like using the world as your mirror exactly and then doing exactly. inner work on that and like you were just talking about well health for your ears and health for your eyes like look at it the same way what you made me think of is it's just like esp is an extra sensory perception so we we want to take care of that extra sense too exactly. that is beyond our our physical sentence senses sentences yeah so i love that so much and um uh, do you believe that um, everyone can just really like work on a, a sense such as, okay, for instance, um, you brought up dreams earlier. I, oh, yes. here's my kitty. I love your cat. <laughs> he, 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 I think he's, you know, he, he knows he's beautiful, so he wants to be seen. You yes, know? of course. Yes, yes. So um, you brought up the dreams and I've had dreams that came true. And actually, since I was a child, so I do strongly believe like that's when I knew, okay, things aren't, like you said, not linear. Because if they were, how am I able to have dreams that actually come true and happen in the future. And is that something that we can develop each gift more or do we only have certain gifts in each person like the Claire's? Do we all have all of them? We all have all the senses, but we are better at some than others. Okay. It's the same thing like with our five sensors. Some people have better hearing than eyesight. Some better. Some people are very good with their nose. They can tell uh, different smells in a perfume. So you have to find your own sense in which one of all these uh, clary sentient clary audience. Um, what is it that is your gift? So, for example, for some people, uh, especially the music oriented people, it's easier for them to get it in an auditory way. Sometimes mm -hmm. they could hear words in their head or sometimes it's like they thought they heard something and it actually is kind of like a clue of where to look. Like growing up, I had different bouts of <laughs> like flare ups of the, all these different gifts kind of, I guess, tuning up to what was best. So I didn't know anything about Reiki. I never heard the word Reiki in my life before. And then one day I was at home cleaning up and I hear the word Reiki in my mind oh and and i was like reiki what is it this was before internet so i had no google for that gotta go to the library <laughs> <laughs> i remember that <laughs> yes and so i was like okay reiki i'm gonna keep that in mind and uh, like days passed and one day walking down the street i see this huge sign outside of a studio saying reiki classes and I wow. was like, oh, let's find out what, what is this. And so this happened several times. But I also have seen, especially when I was not allowed to go to certain parties, 
because of my parents and I was too young. Yeah. I so wanted to know what was going on that I would put a headset with party music and I would close my eyes and try to imagine what was, what was happening in that party. And oh, to wow. my surprise, I was actually observing what was happening. So the next day or the next Monday after the weekend, when I asked my friends what happened and they say, oh yeah, this guy was dancing. And I was like, well, I saw that. And I know you what know? he was wearing. So that's called remote viewing, right? Where you're- Remote viewing. That's remote amazing. Viewing. I was I was talking to, I had a Lincoln on who channels and he, he was saying he could remote view. And I said to him, man, I'm, God knew that not to give me that gift because I would abuse it. I would be- <laughs> I, I'm not someone who should have have that gift, and God knew that. So yeah, that's 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 a good thing. That's definitely a good thing because I'd be like checking in on my neighbors. Yeah, and... exactly. Yeah. Well, my mom used to do that with my brother when he was a teenager. Oh, and she wouldn't so know funny. where he was, and she was like, mm, "He's in the park." Oh no, he's smoking. <laughs> I was like, "Leave it alone." <laughs> Oh my gosh, <laughs> that would be amazing as a mother, right? As a you mother, know? yes. Well, a blessing and a curse. <laughs> right, it'd be, it, oh, solid point. Yeah, because, right, we would see stuff we do not want to see. So yeah, we should yes. <laughs> shouldn't always be tuned in. Leave it as it is, yeah. <laughs> Some things are better left unknown, for sure. Oh, yes, yeah. So like, I've kind of noticed too, like, when I get more, do you think is meditation like to me, meditation and just being alone, just even being alone seems like I get extra tuned in when I do things like absolutely, like that. absolutely. Yeah. Where we have so much noise around us all the time, whether it's visual noise, whether it's like actual noise, we have a lot of stuff going on, and we go through several different states of. Uh, emotional states during the day so when you meditate when you practice any meditative state even chanting mantras or something this kind of shuts down your brain and then you have to connect to this greater intelligence your greater mind your higher self that wise part of you that you could also call the subconscious so when you connect to that this is when you start seeing having like these glimmers of what's actually going on and maybe an answer that you were looking for in a long time comes to you or suddenly you start crying and you're healing something you don't even need to know exactly what that was but you are kind of cleaning up your inner self when you go into these spaces of silence they are very 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 important awesome and then i was thinking too like since my cat's right here that's and this is just me and i'm like I, am i right about this i feel like just well well both my animals always make me feel and, and that's kind of like going back to what you said earlier was play you know playing with my animals makes me feel really more like i feel like i start getting downloads and little uh, pings is what i call them and hits uh -huh, yes. um when i'm playing like when i'm playing with my animals or or out in nature yeah because they ground us in the present yeah. With them, we cannot be anywhere else. We cannot be in the past. We cannot be in the future. We have to be in the present. And when you connect in this way so genuinely with them, and even with nature, when you connect that way, it's incredible. This really like information starts pouring in. Or maybe the information was there the whole time. We just didn't hear it. We just kept that door closed right. of, of perception because we were so busy with other things. We are trained since we are born to be in the past or in the future, you know? And there's right. a reason why the present is called the present because it's a gift. Yes, so true, so true. so much to give you. And like you said, there's just so many distractions these days because of technology. And I can tell you too, that just reminded me another time where I get downloads or inspirational ideas, which, which I think is that's when we're in tune, our intuition, but in the shower. And it's because- oh, yeah. I don't have anything I, I'm not I don't have any distractions like it's completely quiet just me and and then I always kind of wonder too like maybe I'm just making this part up but water is like conductive and like we're electrical electromagnetic beings and maybe it's something to do with the water and but that's when I get a lot of great ideas is, is when I'm taking a shower and I'm like can't that can't be a coincidence 
It's got to be something yeah, to that. Yeah, it's very curious, right? Like, right. it's always in the shower. I have these realizations also, especially when I didn't react to a situation in the past. I'm in the shower and I'm like, oh, so that that happened. And what? <laughs> so I start getting all these informations also, sometimes a bit delayed, but great ideas, inspiration. And of course, we're electromagnetic beings. We're electromagnetic. Yeah. Water is conducive. Also, again, self-care. When we are doing our self-care routines, we are with ourselves. We are pampering ourselves, being in silence. We are honoring ourselves. And when mm -hmm. we honor ourselves, we're also honoring creation and the universe and that, that greater mind or spirit that created us because we're all part of that and we're all part of each other. So when you take care of yourself, you're actually doing a favor to the world. You're That's making so the true. world more beautiful. Because we're all connected. Um, what is your definition of being in the flow? Like, like describe that. Like, I know what it is, but I, I might call it one thing. But what, what do you describe that as? For me, being in the flow is when um, you could call it when you're in a hyper-focused state but at the same time, very relaxed. So I think this is what uh, you could also call, in a way, channel. When you go into channel, in the channel of your own soul, the channel of your own spirit, and you leave all the distractions outside. But you don't have to do it forcefully. It just kind of happens. It's like you flip a switch. Sometimes you don't know exactly how you do it, and you're there. You're in this, in this flow. The ideas come to you. Um, you have an inspiration, you have a glimmer and the person that is perfect to help you execute that shows up, or you have an idea, something that you would like to implement or something you would like to learn more. And suddenly there is a commercial or there is a sign somewhere saying, we're teaching this here, or we'll help you with that here. Um, for me, being in the flow is um, literally as if you are just gliding through life and life is helping you, assisting you, and serving you with all the wonderful things it has. And if you're seeking for healing, it will bring the best way of healing that, co that could be for you, um, the best people that can help you. And even if you are alone, life will bring the, the right clip, the right podcast, the right... Yeah. Um, whatever it is, the right piece of information that you need. And that's being in the flow when you are in this very deep, intimate communication with life, when you're interacting with each other as if it was your best friend and there's nobody else in the world. Yeah, yes, that's what I definitely like. You get like you're when you're in alignment, I guess that's another way of saying it, being in alignment, yes. then you also have those spiritual rendezvous like you're talking about the right person the right time they show up you you can even just serendipities and synchronicities just all the time and you're just it, you can't make it up it's like there's just evidence all around that yes. you're so connected you're so connected to everyone and everything and it's it becomes undeniable and that's what i love about it it's like i get daily evidence and it's like once you start recognizing and pointing out those synchronicities and the beautiful spiritual rendezvous of right right place right time right you know meeting these beautiful people when you point them out you get more of them i've noticed when yes, you acknowledge absolutely. yes and you acknowledge and then you trust you learn to trust you learn to trust life you learn to trust the universe or god or the higher power or however people want to call it you learn to trust because there is no evidence to show you otherwise. And if something happens that you perceive as negative, you understand almost immediately, it might take a little bit of time, but almost immediately, yeah. what's the treasure, what's the gold that comes with that lesson? And then the universe gives you the tools, whether physical or psychological or mental or inspirational or emotional in order to surmount or to learn from that and to create mm -hmm. a new superpower to you know install a new superpower in yourself so the next time you're faced with that situation or somebody else is faced with that situation you're also better equipped to assist or to help or just 
to listen. So I think life is a learning process, obviously. We're faced with uh, lessons and trials all the time, but it depends on how you see them. If right. you see life as a game, the game of life, then things are different. If you think, oh my God, like some president said, we live in a terrible world. Well, that's really sad because the life of that person must be absolutely really terrible. Right. And if you if you realize that you're actually living in a world that is very, very, very absolutely marvelous and beautiful, and there is lots of love and there is lots of generosity, and you experience this in your own life, you give this to yourself, you give beauty to yourself, you, you take uh, your time for self-care, you take your time to realize when you're talking bad to yourself, uh, when you're not giving love to yourself, then people just like you vibrationally will come to your life. People that take care of themselves and can take care of you if you need help. And people that are just pleasant to be around with, people that you can learn with and share and, you know, grow in power in this sense. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I talk about that a lot where like life to me is the purpose is growth and expansion. So, and yeah, it always is going to, and the more, the higher you evolve, you know, when we become aware that we're ascending and all that stuff, um, that's, that's wonderful. It doesn't mean that bad things aren't still going to happen or negative things, you know, and we just see them differently. Like you said earlier, now they become opportunities for growth, learning, you know, when they went or some, something that we can teach somebody else, like you said, you know, where we pay it forward. That's what I do. Like my life coaching, like there's nothing that I will teach anybody that I didn't have to go through myself the hard way, <laughs> kind of trying to prevent other people from going <laughs> spending decades doing it the hard way, right? <laughs> so, you know, we give people um, that opportunity to, to evolve a little bit faster than we did maybe, you know, as, as coaches. Yeah, exactly. To show, to show ways, you know, different techniques Paths. and tools and everybody can see how they use them. I love it. So um, something I wanted to get into, oh, and guys, I forgot to tell you, Andrea is going to give us a treat today of she's going to actually channel for about uh, the, the last 15 minutes of the show. So hang tight, hang in there, and we're going to get to experience that. And she's wonderful. Like I said, I hired Andrea and um, she channeled for me and it was so amazing. I've sent, I've sent you quite a few of my friends as well, and they all yes. only had <laughs> fantastic things to say. So some, before we get to that, I wanted to ask about ways. So when we're developing our psychic, um, when we're developing our techniques, we'll call it, mm -hmm. we probably need to um, protect ourselves in some way, right? From like psychic attacks, things like that. What, what do you recommend? Is, are there any specific things that you would say that we should do to protect ourselves? as we're opening up to the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I have my protocols in place before I go into channeling. And yeah, we're all different, but I am very respectful of that because I have experienced the, what you could call dark or heavy energies mm -hmm. trying to snatch my happiness. <laughs> but that's also another way to learn how to protect yourself. Yeah. Um, first of all, I would say it's the attitude, because if we're living in fear that every time we're going to channel or, or every time we go to that oracle or every time we meditate, um, that there is darkness around that they're going to come in and all these kind of things. Well, you will attract more of that. Right. Uh, so you need to be in a space of power. You need to know that you're teaming up with a, a power that is above everything, a power that is uh, pure love, that is uh, light, that is grace, that is all these beautiful things and that has an amazing capacity to protect you and the whole world. So if you start connecting with, with that first, there are several things that you could do, um, whether it's as a visualization mm -hmm. or in a in a physical state so if it's something physical there's always the black stones any black stones or crystals because they're black they are very good for protection so you can wear them you can have them in your house 
that's like the physical aspect. Yeah. Um, symbols, you can always have anything that is related to sacred geometry because that is basically the blueprint of life. So that will call in for perfection in your life. Um, I actually have some tattoos here. <laughs> oh, cool. You got sacred geometry tattoos. Oh, wow. Yes. And so sacred geometry can also remind us of our blessings and how protected we are and all of this. And then when we go into the realm of visualization, you can always visualize yourself as if you have you seen like the crystals of the quartz that had two tips and they have mm -hmm. faceted. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine yourself as if you are inside a crystal like this, but it's made of mirrors. Mm. So you are inside this mirror uh, shield that goes all around you. So if you think about it, a mirror reflects. So whatever it is that might want to come to you will immediately be dispelled back to its source. Um, you can also imagine or call on white divine light to come and completely cover you as if it were you choose uh, a bubble a tube and however you want to imagine it and then always saying the words you know like whatever energy that is that's not belong to divine love divine presence can go back to its source there's no place for you here so always trying to call on this there's there's no room for you there's no room for fear there's no room for any darkness there's no room for negativity you can go back to where you came from you don't belong here this is a sacred space there's power in here there is protection there is love there's no place for you so there is um i would say probably the most powerful ways to do it and also a new one is um well it's not really new but you can also <laughs> cover your navel if you know you're going into a space that's very negatively charged, you can cover your navel and I don't know, put a band aid or put some your belly button, in. cover your belly your button belly with button. a band aid. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can cover it, and and that is also like a, like a physical type of protection. So that's it's kind of like I symbolism. Do. Like I mean, it's kind of does it just come down to whatever we believe whatever we believe is going to protect us will protect us, you know, exactly. like, because exactly. everything's Absolutely. our beliefs. <laughs> there is, there is this super interesting uh, part in a movie and it was like a movie about like uh, demons and angels and everything. And there is this one guy that the demon is coming to him and he takes the cross and he shows the cross and he says, go away. I have the cross. And the, the demon says, it's useless. You don't believe in it. Oh, and so that's what gives it the power. <laughs> that's where the power comes from. So yeah, when protecting yourself, it sounds like you're saying it's more of a knowing. You just know you're protected because if you sit around and and worry and you do all these rituals all the time, like oh, I'm, you know, there's yeah. all this negative energy, then you can actually draw that to you. The negative, exactly, exactly. the opposite of what you're trying. <laughs> Exactly. You might be drawing in more fear and, and more people just trying to, you know, because if you think about it, our energy field, it's like a like a fisher, fisherman's net. It's mm -hmm. like a net. Mm -hmm. And when we do things that are related to fear, if, for example, oh, I'm afraid tomorrow I have a meeting, I don't like this person, I'm going to do all my rituals, but I'm still going with fear to that meeting. Mm -hmm. I am creating, punch, I'm punching holes in my energy net. And so on top of that, it's not only that I'm creating these holes in my energy net where any energy can come in, but it's also my energy. Leaking out. out. Your energy leak can out. leak out. Yeah. It's like a balloon. So we really need to, to come back to us and to, to call that higher love, higher presence and take time through meditation to really feel and connect with it. And then you realize that it's it's inside you because we are a spark of the divine. Is it necessary to um, ask our angels and spirit guides for help every day? I've heard that we need to do it every day, invite them in because of free will. Or can we just do like kind of at, do a little prayer where we're a blanket prayer? Do we need to continue to ask every day for protection and guidance? I always I do it every day. 
because it feels better, but I don't know if it's necessary if I'm just overdoing it, but I always do ask my angels and my spirit guides to give me guidance and direction each day and to also send me at least one person each day who I can help like reconnect to their inner light. Like that's a prayer that I say every day. And I'm like, am I, is it, is that out of fear? Why am I doing it every day? Is that necessary? Look, it again, it's choice. It's okay. about what you believe. It's about what you believe and what you feel is, is best for you. Because, for example, I do this the night before. So mm -hmm. the night time to me is my time where I connect and I give thanks for my day. And then I also give thanks for the next day, for all the good things on the next day. And even if I have to do things and I don't know how they will turn out, I will say thank you because this went well, everybody was happy and I can go on with my life. Um, I personally say, call them the guys, my guys. So not guides, my guys. G-U-Y-S, -U -Y -Y <laughs> like, hey guys, what's up? I like it. Yeah, exactly. So casual, like, keep it cash. Okay. okay, guys, we're going out now. So let's do this. So I, I, I imagine that I'm kind of going with my gang together and they're like, you know, you shall not pass. This is my girl. You know, we're going like to do things together today. They're bouncers, so that's, like bouncers exactly. for a club. <laughs> exactly. This, this, that's just me, you know? That's I love me. it. I'm going to start incorporating that, actually. That's funny. <laughs> like but, it. you know, I grew up, I grew up uh, learning the, um, the guardian angel uh, prayer. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of uh, made it more real for me because it wasn't simply something that I felt that was always around us kind of taking care of us indirectly but because there was a prayer it became real it right. was like you know uh, some sort of a strange validation but um, in the mind of a child sometimes when there are things you cannot see and you don't understand if somebody comes with a prayer that is supposed to be something powerful coming from a greater authority it's like, oh, other people know about this too. So that's great. Yeah. So in a way, the way you create your own prayers in the way you, you call your own protection uh, for your greater good and for the greater good of everyone that might come or live your life, um, it's your personal prayer. It's your personal power. It's like a spell, but uh, yeah. energy. I love that. So I guess, so well, before you channel, Tell the audience where do you what is where do you channel from? Who are you channeling? Source energy or? Yeah, I channel source energy. I go straight to. And, the and what is source energy? <laughs> yeah, because I think a lot of my a lot of my audience might not even know what source energy is. So, what if do you, you? How do you define that? Um, well, I I see it many ways. I'm mostly a visual person, so I explain things in like cute pictures. <laughs> <laughs> for me source is if you imagine where the place where all creation comes from it's like a huge bonfire right and mm -hmm. it's there and this is what you could call uh universal consciousness the universe the creator god goddess whatever label you want to put into it mm -hmm. and i feel that we are the sparks coming out of this fire right and as humans we are born in the spark and then our spark goes away and we go back to source this is how i see it so mm. when i connect to source i am connecting to this um yeah the, like where everything came from this source energy constantly yeah. <laughs> being generated exactly the source. right right and and like abraham hicks would say we're all extensions of source energy like exactly fractals and so I guess let's go ahead and if you don't mind you want to get started doing that and what I think that would be a great conversation and also whatever source decides that we want to know is perfectly fine but if we could talk a little bit about like I wrote down um I think a lot of people have um a lot of healing of emotional wounds to do and it really gets them stuck in life until they get you know some of this resolved so maybe we could discuss that a little bit healing emotional wounds yeah, I'm going to close my eyes and then you can you can begin to ask. Okay. Oh. 
Okay. Okay. Um, source energy. I would like to ask about how people in this world, how can we heal emotional wounds that have been like maybe childhood wounds that have been bothering us and they just keep us stuck in life and they cause limiting beliefs. What advice do you have on helping us heal those wounds? A child is a precious being, a precious being that is so fresh and full of source energy. When children get trauma, when children experience suffering and pain, it's a very, very deep wound, but nothing that cannot be healed. Sometimes these wounds are chosen or picked from even before that child or that life came into existence. So it becomes part of their life lessons. And so in this way, when you want to heal your inner child, when you want to heal that experience that you had as a child, what is it that was needed then? Was it love? Was it understanding? Was it nurturing? Was it being more present in your body? Was it being more, putting more boundaries around yourself? Did you lack, did you lack understanding at the time? Well, anything you might have lacked in that moment, in that painful experience, you can bring back now as an adult and start looking for the tools to heal it, but the healing doesn't come from the outside. The healing comes from the inside. Know yourself, who you are. You are not the one, the child. You are the divine child. You have an immense amount of love and potential. All of this exists within you. Connect with your child. And how you connect with your child, you love yourself. If you didn't get treats, if you didn't get candies, give yourself candies. If you didn't get new clothes, get yourself new clothes. If you didn't get nice words, give yourself nice words. If, if you were lacking good foods, give yourself good foods. If you were lacking education, give yourself education. If you received violence, Give yourself gentleness and heal slowly but surely and ask for the help so it comes to you. It will come in its right time and it will be the perfect fit for you. But you cannot expect healing to come from the outside. Love, nurture the love in yourself. Become your own nurturer. Nurturing yourself is your number one responsibility, your number one job. If you nurture yourself and heal yourself, it's like you are sending this healing wave, like ripples in a pond to the whole world. If you heal yourself, this becomes your superpower. This becomes a characteristic, a positive trait of yourself. And then anything that comes in your life, you will know how to deal with it because you have this balsam, this energy, this medicine coming from within. I love that. So thank you very much for that answer. So it sounds like a lot of people in the spiritual community, I, I, I feel that they think that it's almost selfish for self-care. But what I hear you saying is that it's actually the ultimate spiritual act is to take care of yourself. And then that way we can take care of other people. <laughs> What if God hated himself? Wouldn't he be the devil? Oh, that's a really good point. Love yeah. yourself. You are part of the creator. I love that. So if um, I guess the last question I'll ask is what is the most important thing that you would recommend for someone who's trying to awaken their spiritual gifts since that's what this episode's about what is the, what is the best tool that you could recommend to someone listening you live in a beautiful planet a planet that is full of full of life a planet 
of which you are made of. You and Earth are like one ecosystem, one organism. You are sharing your energy with each other, spending time in nature, observing nature, just being under the sun, even if it's for a little bit. Nature will calm your senses. Nature will bring balsam over your soul. Nature will heal you. Nature is going to tune you up to start seeing, realizing, and finding meaning in all these little miracles that happen every day in life. Find beauty in nature, and you will find the beauty and the same kind of immense love in yourself. I love that, and I definitely feel that that's true for me when I'm out in nature. I definitely feel way more connected. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that channel. Thank you. So how do you feel when you're when you're back, when you're out of your trance? How does how do you feel like tired or more energetic? It's like taking a, a nice nap. <laughs> oh, nice. Because I've heard both. I hear like some people get like whew, really way more energy and other people get exhausted, you know, so. Yeah, it's very relaxing and I usually feel it on one side of the body more than mm -hmm. the other. And I think this is what allows me to kind of still be the observer in the situation. Because some people are, you know, if we think of a car and you are the driver and energy is uh, your co-pilot, uh, it's the energy takes the wheel for me and I see it in the back. That's what happens in my case, but I'm still there. Right. But in, in other cases, um, energy takes the wheel and you just exit the car <laughs> so there are people that completely lose their consciousness they completely I, right yeah. and and you're still kind of semi aware yeah and i understand this is also agreements that we had from before to channel before we came here yes and how how it will be executed <laughs> nice okay yeah i've noticed too because, you know, I've, I've been into channeling forever, right? And um, just ever since I first heard about it decades ago and following people, including like Bashar and stuff. And I've noticed mm -hmm. like, and, and of course, Esther Hicks and just, it, it, they, it's really picked to, to where it's people who have such a great vocabulary and they're able to articulate things very well. You know, you don't, you don't really see many people channeling who, because they can only use the words that you have already right in your yeah in your knowledge yeah, exactly and it's funny because my husband says when i go into channel i speak differently yeah you do and, yeah or or even when i read the, the tarot cards i speak differently and it's i guess it's the same kind of wave that i connect to and i just let this this information come through because mm. You know, I I have a, I have the feeling and I see a picture. That's how it works for me. And I obviously I feel the energy. Um, and so and then comes the words. The words are attached to that. I love that. So do you have your tarot cards near you? Do can you do a general quick reading for the audience? Oh, or if you if, if cards if, with that's me. okay. That's okay. It just was an idea that popped in my head. I was like, that'd be cool, <laughs> like to do a general reading for the audience. <laughs> So, um, Andrew, is there anything else that you wanted to did you that you wanted to share that we haven't touched on yet? Well, I think in general, something that has been coming up a lot, especially lately, is uh, there are many people that are being very anxious about wanting to change the world. Mm -hmm. Again, the change comes from within. You can go out there and demonstrate, and that it's all good, but. If you want to see beauty in the world, bring beauty into your life. Be able to see the beauty in the world for yourself through your eyes, through, experience it in your emotional world, in your words. If you want to see prosperity in the, in the world, uh, bring it into your life. Prosperity is, is a state of trusting 
that you will be provided and trusting that you are taken care of, trusting that whatever is there for you is, is for you, trusting that whatever comes into your mind is not just a, a nonsense, but if it really is for you, you will, you will know the way how to bring it to yourself. Um, so whatever you want to see on the outside, exercise in the privacy of your life with yourself. And I think number one, inner dialogue. Yeah. And I mean, you make such a good point too about like, like the, when you're talking about the demonstrations and stuff, it's like what all that stuff is good. We can't all just bear, bury our head in the sand to pretend like nothing's going on in the world. Right. But what energy are we bringing to it? And are we actually focused on solutions or problems? Because what I, what, what I can't stand is when people just complain and point out all the negative, but there's, there's nothing solution based. Like, what are we going to do? And if, you know, what energy are we bringing to it? The solution based or the problem based? Because exactly we're, we can make things worse inadvertently. You know what I mean? Completely yeah. unintentionally by focusing on only the negative. And I heard Bashar say just yesterday was um, doing a, a channel um, who's Daryl Anka channeling Bashar. And and it was about it was about chemtrails and things like that and conspiracy theorists. And, and the, mm -hmm. the point was, is like the big joke is all about like people who get really involved because, you know, I, you know, I, I think there's a lot of truth in a lot of these conspiracies. Right. But if the people yeah. who really get involved and they just that's what they how they spend their day, like they're in their basement just doing that and just spreading all this fear, spreading all this stuff, only focusing on the problem and, and never focusing on a solution and then getting everybody else afraid. Um, a lot of these people who are in, you know, in power, a lot of that power is an illusion. And yeah. the big joke is that the people spreading all of that fear based stuff, but not, you know, they're their biggest advertisers of the exactly. people in power. You're 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 sitting there like making people afraid. And that's actually empowering the people we're trying to. And, and we have the power in numbers. Yes. People have the power. Yes. We, we just forget. We forget that. Yes. And, and so like the conspiracy people, you know, if anyone's listening and all you're doing is sitting in your basement, spreading fear to everybody and, 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 and sending videos, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're going back to the same principle of asking for protection or protecting yourself. Are you protecting mm -hmm. yourself out of fear because we live in a horrible world? Or are you protecting yourself because, you know, it's like when I say, okay, guys, we're going out now. We're gonna do. We're gonna run this errand. It better work. Let's go. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's different. There's a different yeah. tone to it. And when you are into the conspiracy, it's fine. It's good to understand certain things that are happening. But like you said, you are basically endorsing them. Yeah. For giving them power. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So if you think about this in terms of energy or good and bad, you're basically feeding the bad so they can manipulate everyone e easier. But if you feed the good, then you are empowering the people to create change. And change comes from within. Mm -hmm. Higher upper vibration. Everything around yourself will change. They're like lights. If we would all go on at the same time as the masses that we are, there would be no darkness. Earth would be such a different place. Right. And I do think we pass that tipping point where there's more light. There, there is more. And light's always more powerful than the darkness anyway. But yeah, the power is in the numbers. So the more people who are wake up, like, you know, their number is not that big in comparison. And also, it's just got to remember our power. And also we have to remember that the more light, the more we will see into what's going on in the darkness, because that light it uncovers be it. like a flashlight looking into what's happening. So we shouldn't be too worried if we see there's more stuff coming up. This, this stuff has been there for a while. You can see exactly. it now. That's the difference. It's not new. It's not new. It's it's people have been abusing power for, you know, since the beginning of time. And yeah. we're just the reason it feels like it's getting worse is because more people are waking up to what's always been there, which means exactly, exactly what you just said. There's more light than ever. But it, exactly. it, it's, it, it's an illusion to think it's getting worse, in my opinion. Yeah, it is an illusion. And we have to be very awake and aware about that. And we have to 
empower ourselves in in this energetic sense and the way that we conduct our lives even more so like but truly from within not because recycling is uh politically correct if i don't do my recycling then i'm a bad person okay i i cannot say anything <laughs> about that it's just an example <laughs> you know and um, what i'm trying to say is it's not about what society says is right or wrong it's about your true self the golden rule don't do to others what you wouldn't like to get done to yourself yes if everybody did that that would be the only rule we need <laughs> yeah it's basically the only rule we need the golden rule but yeah and the and the other thing about that is just the the divide and conquer is what's going on right now and if people would just wake up to that and realize that we're we're being played in that way where we, we actually we, we can't control what other people's like political beliefs and stuff are but we got to realize that we all are in this together and you know as long as we stay divided we're we're taking we're weakening ourselves we're taking away our yeah, own strength exactly exactly you if if you think about it if people are more divided in the world if you bring this to the analogy of your own physical body if you cut yourself an arm you're weakening yourself mm -hmm. so this is why i mean it's empathy we have to start by realizing and remembering that we're all humans we all feel the same and whether the perceptions of some people are different than the others we're all here to learn we're all here to evolve we're all here to hopefully connect to that spirituality to our spirit in a way that is detached from ego because there's lots of ego in the spiritual world as well but again yeah <laughs> every from from one to many from one to many just take care of yourself and, and you will bring that beauty into your world. You will bring that beauty. You will see the illusion of everything that is happening right now when you bring this love and this beauty and this nurturing and this self-care into your life. I love that. Yeah, that, and that's true. That's really all we can do. We try to control the uncontrollable sometimes, but we what we do have... The one thing that we definitely do have control over is our own vibration and our, yes. and, and, and we can't, I can't control your vibration. You can't control mine, but I can control my own to an extent. And then when I get it, when I do inevitably, you know, get out of control a little bit, I catch myself quickly and, and, and reel it back in. That's, <laughs> it's, right. it, that, that's what it's about. It's a, it, it doesn't mean you never lose control of your vibration. It's how fast can you get back to your exactly set point. that's 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 the key that's the key right there mm -hmm. well andrea has been a wonderful conversation where i'm going to put all of your information in the show notes so anybody can find you but where would you like to tell people to go to find you your website or what's the best way to reach you um you can go to my instagram the instagram is fortuna living spirit Mm -hmm. and there you will have all my information as well I have all my links there so and you can also look at some videos what I'm into and all this kind of stuff <laughs> yeah perfect and yeah and I'm following you so you'll know it's the right person and I'm also going to put that in the show notes or comments below whatever platform you're watching this on and you guys please subscribe to this new station this new podcast spiritual transformation every week I have a guest like Andrea who is spiritually gifted you can channel or maybe they just have a story of transformation, spiritual transformation, but each week it's gonna be a new guest. And thank you, Andrea, for your time. You have thank been you absolutely wonderful. I appreciate you. I loved being here. I love sharing this space with you. Oh, well, thank you. And, and same here. Well, to the audience, goodbye, everyone. And um, subscribe if you haven't already. If this seemed like an episode that you think could help somebody else, please, hit like, please comment and share. That helps so much with the algorithm, helps us reach more people. And this was an important conversation, especially towards the end there, we got really deep. Mm, yes, <laughs> we could go for hours. <laughs> I honestly, I could talk to you for a few more hours and it, it, this time, this time really flew, didn't it? Yes. <laughs> well, Andrea, um, you stay on here and we will say goodbye to the audience. Bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you.